Hi, welcome to Programming with Mesh. In this session, we learn about SQLite as a local database and use it to build an offline login. In a previous session, we learned how to use async storage and store data locally on the device. Now we want to do the same login process using a local database called SQLite. I changed the login page image to the SQLite logo and delete the name below it. The main site of this database is sqlite.org and you can get help from sqlitetutorial.net to learn how to work with it. For example, in this section we can see how to use the select query. Using this module, we can use SQLite database in the app. I copy this command and install the module. First, on the login page, I import SQLite. We no longer need async storage here. Now before the main function, we define the database in a const. We use the open database method. In the first parameter, we define the database specifications. First, we specify the name of the database. And then the location of the database file for which we select the default. In the next parameter, returns a function if successful. And if an error occurs, we display it in the next parameter in this function. Using this method, the database file is created and we open it in dbconst. This method can also be used to open pre-built databases. Now I create a function called createTable to create a desired table in the database. To run a query inside the database, we use this structure by the transaction method. Inside the execute SQL method, we enter the query as a string. And here we instruct the database to create the table if it doesn't exist with the name we want. I name the table users to store user information in it. Now we need to define the name and type of columns in the table. Consider the first column an ID that identifies each row and user. Here we specify the data type in the column that can only be integer numbers. Here we have specified that this column be used as the primary key of table. And here we have specified that the value inside this column is filled automatically and incrementally. We also create a column for name with text type and a column for age with integer type inside the table. Now we call this function at the beginning of the page to create the table if it doesn't exist. Now in the setData function, instead of async storage, we use the database we created to save values. This is how we run the insert query in the database. Enter the name of the table we created for the users here. Then enter the names of the columns in which we want to store the data. Now enter the values in the query string in the same way. The first value because it's text type must be entered as a string. And the second value as a number. To wait for this query to run and then perform the operation we want, we can use the async await structure. Here the setData function is async, so we only use await here. In this transaction, we can also use async await. We entered the values directly in the query here. 
Alternatively, we can enter values in an array in the next parameter. In this way, the values inside the array are placed in place of the question marks, respectively. After running this query, we will be directed to the home page. So we use this part in the home page to use the created database. Now in the get data function on the home page, we use the SQLite database instead of async storage. This time we use the SELECT query and select the name and age columns from the users table. This query returns all rows of the table. If in the future you wanted to select only desired row, you can do so using WHERE. Here because we only have one row in the table, we don't need WHERE. In the second parameter we put the array values inside the query which is empty here. And in the next parameter we will have a function that returns the result if the execution is successful. Here we put the number of rows in the result into the variable len to check if a row is obtained from the executed query. If a row was recorded in the table, we extract the name and age values from the first row using the column names. We then store the values in the states associated with them. Now we use this part in the get data function on the login page. So that if the information is already saved, the user will be directed to the home page. Now I run the app to see the result. If you run the app after installing the module, and if you run the app on Android, first sync the Gradle and then try again. Well now if we enter the information and log in, As you can see, the information is read correctly from the database. And if I refresh the app, because the information is stored in the database, we will be redirected to the home page. Now I will explain how to update the database in the update data function on the home page. This time we use the update query. And in the users table, we update the name column value. This query is applied to all rows of the table. If you want to limit it, you can use where. We have a row here, so we don't need it. In the next parameter, enter the name, entered in text input as a new value. I also create success and error functions. Here I put the message that the update was successful in this function to be displayed after running the query. As you can see, the name has been updated in the database. And if I refresh the app, you will see that the information is stored correctly. Now to delete the information and return to the login page, in the remove data function, we use the delete query in the database. This query deletes all rows of the table, and as I said, you can use where to restrict it.
we enter the rest of the parameters and if the query is successful, we will redirect the user to the login page. As you can see, the information has been removed from the users table and on the next visit, the user will remain on the login page. To better understand the structure of a database, we do what we did on the database directly on the database file. I use SQLite Browser for this purpose. From this section, you can download the latest version for your operating system. Well, I have already installed and opened it. From here, you can open the pre-built database or create a new database. I create a new database. And I create a table called users inside it. As you can see, the relevant query is created in this section and you can use it in the app. I create the columns according to the table we had in the app. And here you can see the query related to making the table in full. From here you can create a new record in the table. As you can see the ID was generated and set automatically. Other column values can be entered here. And from here, we can delete the selected row. In addition, from this section, we can run queries on the database and view the result. Using this button, we run the query and as you can see, the values are saved. Using this button, I deactivate this line and run the next query. This query was also executed correctly and the name value was updated. Finally, we deleted the table content with this query. So there we go, we learned how to use SQLite as a local database on the device. So in the next video, we will talk about Redux for managing application state. Now if you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next session.